<laughs> hey everyone <laughs> i'm doing it like third time already um yeah sorry for technical problems but we are finally online it seems um so uh as we promised today is our q a session where we collected all the questions over this um big event of ours uh, called the web week and um Everything that you ask, or I think someone is on mic. Um, yeah, sorry for technical problems, but we are fine on mic, it seems. Um, so, uh, oh, I had a on. Sorry for that. Okay, um, so I'm screen sharing. Yeah. And um, you are free to ask more questions in the live chat. So afterwards, we're going to try to answer them live. So please feel free to do this. And uh, first, I would like to um, say some congratulations to the winners of our Twitter contest. Uh, so these five uh, lucky guys you see on the screen are receiving a free uh, only office home server um, as a prize for the Twitter contest. So we're going to contact you on Twitter with all the details on how you can actually retrieve your presence. So I guess we should start with the questions. And okay, let's begin. So the first question in line is, can you show if it's possible to retrieve a field from another document on the uh, No, unfortunately it's not possible. We are discussing implementing this for the server-based version, but there are many nuances and security concerns. This feature is more likely to be implemented in for, for the desktop version. All right, thank you for the answer. Next question. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, yes, they can be disabled. For this, go to the File tab, Advanced Settings. In the Micro Settings field, choose Disable All. Okay, thank you. Um, third question. Um, so, team on office, any forecast on implementing data validation and lists? I would like to know. So, are we planning any uh, implementing data validation and list? Okay, thank you for the question. So, partly we support data validation. This mean, means that you can use rules created in another editor but you can't create new ones in only office. The full data validation functionality, including drop-down drop down lists, will be added in the next major release. That is version seven. Okay, thank you. And next question is, uh, when word count will be available in the desktop editors? Um, so it's already available in the file tab document info. If you want it to appear on the status bar, unfortunately this won't happen soon, but it's on our, on our roadmap. Uh, if you want the word count for a selected fragment, it's in our plans too. Uh, let us know on Twitter that you need to, to speed up the process. Okay, thanks. Um, so when will drop down lists appear? As I mentioned in my previous response, it will be added together with the data validation functionality in the next major release. Thank you. Uh, another question, um, a dark mode for desktop editors, um, are we planning any? Uh, yeah, it will be implemented soon. We are working on it just now. Oh, perfect, this seems good. Um, okay, there are also many questions about RTL. So what about RTL? 
Uh, so it's my favorite question so far, <laughs> and I'll try to answer. Um, yes, it's a very important feature for a lot of customers, of users, of only office worldwide. And yes, we agree that it's a must have today and we have it on our roadmap. Um, I hope that next time when we will discuss this question, we will share with you some great news about implementation of it. But unfortunately, it's not as easy as just to rewrite some part of our code. We need to make a lot of changes uh, to really support right to left um, in our editors. Today, we try to do our best to somehow speed up the process. Uh, we have hired uh, more developers. And um, so I hope that this year we will um, develop a lot of features which our users are waiting for. And right to left is one of the most required feature on this list. Okay, thank you for this answer. Yeah, very interesting. And our next question is, um, unfortunately, there is no print preview option. Missing, And I just hope the developers would fix it soon. So what about this? Uh, yes, we haven't added this option yet, but it's on our roadmap, of course. Um, by the way, in the web version, some browsers will show you the preview. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, if someone says in the next question that this is a very good office solution, but there are two more bugs. Uh, first, a few translations are missing in my language. And also, um, I found a bug with patterns on merge cells in spreadsheet. I reported an issue on GitHub, and still there might be some incompatibilities. Thanks for reporting the bugs. Please report the missing translation on GitHub as you did, or contact us at documentation at onlyoffice.com. All right, uh, thanks. Um, in another question, only office is only good if you are a paying user, else it is pretty much unusable. Try to run it on Nextcloud, wouldn't even save the document I made. What about this problem? Sorry to hear that. However, in your case, that's not a question of free or paid version. You are using Community Document Server, a PHP rework of our document server created by Nextcloud team. Please switch to dedicated document server that is created by our team and can be deployed by our installation guides. There are Docker, DEP, RPM, or Windows installation types, and we promise the problem will disappear. Thank you. Yeah, this seems like a really common issue. <laughs> All right, um, so next question. Only Office sounds great, but I got uh, just one big issue. I can't find any mask tool for the presentation. Um, so does someone know if it's existing or not? Uh, okay, if we understood you correctly, we have it. Uh, to create a mask for your picture, you need uh, to create shapes or placeholders for your picture. Uh, then on the right side panel, you'll find the background drop down list. Uh, choose picture or texture and select a picture for this shape or placeholder. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, this program eats my REM on Windows. After one minute of using, it starts to stop all REM. This sounds like an issue. And regarding this case, we would need more detailed information such as application version, operational system of the server or PC and the original file. So we are able to reproduce the issue on our site and detect its reason. You can send us an example of your file to files at onlyoffice.com. Thank you. 
And the next question, on the office is my choice for a while now. It's quite odd. It's not translated in Latvian, despite being based here. <laughs> but the user base is small here, so that's understandable. Okay, so yeah, we definitely will add the Latvian translation. Uh, as far as I know, we will add it uh, to desktop editors really soon. We actually are constantly working on translation of online office to all the possible languages. For now, we have about 50 languages. And I probably would like to also say a huge thank you to all our contributors who help us to support this huge number of languages for online office. All right, thank you. Yeah, we indeed have many, many languages coming. I even took part in it myself. <laughs> so just really, really soon. And actually, I think it's already translated, but just need to release it in a new version. So wait. Um, uh, next question, can it open Microsoft Office files? <laughs> a cool question. Yes, it can. <laughs> actually, DocX uh, is our native format. Um, you can be sure that you will open any docx file without distortions. The biggest part of all the documents worldwide is still saved in docx format. That's why we have based our solution on this format. And yes, using only Office, you won't get any difficulties by switching from MS, uh, MS Office or dealing with the colleagues who are still using it. So yes, we do support DocX. Yeah, that was a good question. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's collaborative. It's especially the integration of only Office in Moodle. Uh, we've been using it every day since May and it's great, but collaborative work in a spreadsheet without uh, respecting the protection of cells is disorienting. There's still work to do. Okay, thanks for the question. Uh, protected sales and sheet are on our roadmap, and this is a high priority task for us. Uh, we are planning to add the ability to save the password on the server, and in version 7, we are to support the protection of data on the sheet. Okay, thanks. Um, a question. Um, I get a message that the address is not found. As far as I understand, the reason is to factor um, authent authentication is enabled in Nextcloud. How should I proceed and connect on the office in this case? This is about the mobile application. Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, I want to uh, say that our Android app version 5.0 uh, supports Nextcloud to factor authentication. First of all, uh, I would uh, recommend to clear cache of only Office documents up on your device. If it does not help, try to entirely reinstall the app. Please double check also the login and password you are using. The best way of, for troubleshooting for this case would be contacting our technical support as we will need a test account in Nextcloud, screenshots or better screencast of the problem. You can also create a security token in Nextcloud settings. Go to personal and then security. But if you can't move past address validation step, you either made a mistake in the portal address or there are some difficulties in your Nextcloud setting. Please contact our support team and we will be glad to assist you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. How can I make change tracking automatically activated? Uh, could it be a macro? No, unfortunately, you can't create such a macro because we have no methods for it. You can try using access rights like review. Also, if you save a doc with the track changes enabled, it will be later opened in track changes mode. Thanks for the answer. Um, next question. I didn't find the uppercase, lowercase, toggle case, et cetera, functions in only Office desktop editor. 
Uh, you can find it easily by right clicking on the document text, choosing paragraph advanced settings and going to the font section. As for shortcuts, uh, they will be added later. I'm getting pretty quick. Sorry. Um, so uh, next question is about force safe. So what about force safe? Yes, for safe or keeping intermediate version is a long awaited feature that allows to save the current state of the file that is being edited. As you know, saving of the file is performed in about 15 seconds uh, after all editing sessions are over. It means that all browser tabs are closed by all users. So we added the possibility to save the file before the editing is finished. When we are talking about only office groups, Nextcloud or on cloud integrations, this option is available in the web interface. Those who are developing their own management system should implement it, uh, I mean, for safe using our API. Thank you. Um, another question. Uh, our biggest need is uh, a data bound sheets. Uh, I know it's difficult to add the source as a SQL server unless the only office runs on a <clears throat> on premise only office. But what about an XML feed? Okay, the described task can be implemented by means of plugins this way. You request data from the server, receive a response, put the obtained data to the plugin and add the data to the file. If you want to discuss this request, uh, the, the, the required feature in more details, I would recommend you to describe the full step-by-step -step scenario on our forum so we can analyze, uh, so we can understand and analyze it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, another question. Uh, hello, I wanted to ask if I understand right that the desktop app on the Office desktop editors um, is as open source uh, and free to use even for commercial use. Also, when I don't connect desktop editors to the cloud, no data is transferred outside the device when I edit local documents. Thank you for the information. Okay, so yes, only Office desktop editors are completely open source. They uh, have the license uh, HPL version three. You can always find and download it from the GitHub. Uh, the fact is that we concentrate on online editing and these offline apps are, are just uh, offered to make the work with online office more convenient for our users. So we do not plan to limit desktops in any way. And this is all the same for private users, for commercial projects, for enterprises. So for all these types of users. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, another question is, um, can you please help me? Uh, the desktop editors for Windows doesn't support touch screens. Um, basically, only Office uh, desktop editors partially support touch screens. Touch screen, drawing and handwriting is, is not supported, but other buttons work. If you have faced any issues with that, please submit a, a separate issue on GitHub in desktop editors branch. Uh, thanks for this. Um, another question. Um, I have a question. Uh, can you help me? Uh, hello, uh, I'm an owner of Zoom account. And I would like to give the possibility to other users to create a project to upload a document. How can I give them this access? Thank you. It's a very interesting question. Thank you for it. Um, so for now, we do not have this direct integration of uh, only office with Zoom, unfortunately, just because it's really high, highly demanded by the customers by the users of online office. We actually do have these plans to work on this integration. 
but uh, we try, we want to make it really functional. So uh, we would like to add the functionality, like uh, open the document uh, in a call, co-edit um, together with other participants of the Zoom call, uh, save it, etc. So we try to make it really functional and good for the users. So we do not want to add this uh, like new PR activity to just report that, hey, we have a new integration. Um, so I suppose that we probably need to work closer with the Zoom team to make something really worth using. Thank you. Yeah, this it was very interesting. And um, OK, uh, next question. I will turn on spell check and send and set the spell checker to Swedish. I have read the instructions, but there is no icon for setting the document language. Um, OK, by default, icons for changing the language for the whole document are located in the lower toolbar uh, in the button on the edit page. Um, so if you don't see this bar, please make sure the setting option hide status bar is not selected. Um, you can check it easily. Just click view settings button um, in the upper right corner. And uh, if the option is activated, uncheck it and you will see the needed icons. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question, uh, my PC uh, accidentally shut down and my own office uh, Excel file uh, got lost. So it's version 54230. Uh, is it able to recover back? Uh, there's important data inside the file. Um, if we are speaking about only FS desktop editors, the lost file uh, should appear on the recover tab. Thank you. Um, next question, uh, is uh, LDAP and uh, 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 SSO available in the free version? Uh, yes, uh, those features are available in control panel and starting from version 11, control pan panel with uh, its administration features is free. Good. Um, next question, uh, will your Android app appear on F-Droid? Um, right now we are exploring this opportunity and we hope that we will add our app there in the future. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, it makes me wonder how to specialize in Office Open XML and to compare um, well, Office Open XML strict is an uh, ISO open standard. Uh, does only Office have uh, a deep agreement with Microsoft to be able to fully implement Office Open XML uh, transitional, or is this reverse engineered like many do too? Thank you for this question. Uh, we have a great team and no dev agreements with Microsoft. We used the open specifications, including standard ECMA 376 for all formats support. For the tricky parts, the trial and error method was the only way. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I guess we have just a couple of questions left. Um, so, uh, did the pandemic affect on the office? Um, yes, definitely yes. We all started um, to work from home remotely. It's quite new for us, uh, but at the same time, it's a very productive time for us. Uh, so more and more teams are seeking for a new software to remotely collaborate in teams and really many of them are choosing only office. Uh, some enterprises are looking for cool alternative uh, for the software which are already in use. And again, they uh, often come to only office. 
and uh, this year we even have to uh, hire more managers to work with our customers or with our users and probably this situation helps us uh, to better understand what exactly we need to, to, to do next, what features we need to add, etc. So uh, I suppose that this situation uh, makes us to work even more productive. Uh, this is optimistic, thank you. And uh, okay, next question. Are you coping uh, Google with this new workspace naming? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> Hope that nobody uh, wanted to copy any ideas from both sides. Um, so we have been working on this uh, software, on this new name for several months already. And we were really surprised when they released the product with the same name a week ahead of us. Uh, but yeah, we are not sad about it. It just confirms that the name was chosen right. And this idea of creating a virtual workspace is obvious due to uh, what's happening this year. Uh, yeah, 2020 is tough indeed. <laughs> okay, um, what about uh, maximum number of users? There you go. Very difficult question. Okay, thank you for this question. Uh, basically, there are several options. Without clustering, it's about 1,000 uh, users per one doc document server. When we are talking about cluster deployment of the document server, we have already tested this installation for 10,000 users and are going to have more impressive numbers in the nearest future, as there are no technical limitations for some endpoint here. Thank you. Um, okay, two more questions. Uh, first, uh, how often the new versions are released? Um, we release three, four versions of our editors for all supported platforms a year and two uh, versions of community server a year. Uh -huh, thank you. So the very last question um, of which we have at least. Um, so your advantages over Microsoft Office and Collabora, a brilliant one. Thank you for the question. It's really good for us to try to uh, explain this difference, the advantages we have. And I suppose it's really easy to see. So the uh, desktop option, the desktop version of MS Office uh, is really a powerful software, but it's uh, proprietary and offline. So we are open source, we're cross-platform, and you can always install only Office uh, completely free on PC or on a server. Uh, as for the online option of MS Office, uh, Office 365, uh, so we can compare it to the offline product and it really lacks a significant amount of functionality. Um, it's probably even safe to say that uh, we offer a better compatibility with the files created in the MS Office offline. And sometimes we even have more features that uh, this online version um, and again, you can always install on the office in house and be sure about the security and safety of your data. This is really important. Um, as for Collabora, to make the long story short, uh, we offer better compatibility with the MS Office formats with the DocX. Uh, while Collabora is a successor of LibreOffice and keeps all the editing on the server side, uh, we have moved all the editing to the client side and it gives us a lot of uh, options um, with flexibility, with scalability, scalability of this software. So, and besides, yes, we can guarantee that we keep uh, all the formatting of the documents safe when working with them. And 
uh, what I would like to add probably that it's always better to just give a try to the software, just install it and use it uh, to better understand if it's the right software for you. It's cool that we have uh, several alternatives on the market and the user can decide uh, what exactly they prefer to use. I would also say that our competitors uh, make us always to work even better and always try to do more for our users. That's all. Yeah, uh, amazing question and amazing answer for the end of the session. Thank you. Um, okay, but it's actually not the last one because we, because we got one extra question on the live chat. And this is, uh, can you install add-ons in the cloud version on macros? Yeah, I'm, I'll try to answer. So if you are using the public cloud version, yeah, theoretically you can install them as a Chrome extensions. So, but mostly they come already pre-installed by us. But thanks for the question anyway, good. Um, okay, so I believe there are no more questions either uh, prepared or during the live session. So I would like to thank my colleagues. That was uh, Galina, our head of sales, uh, Victoria for customer support and Alex from professional services. Yeah, that was a good job. And thank you all for the questions. Um, please keep asking them. We will try to answer uh, how we can. And uh, tomorrow we have the last part of our um, web week, which is going to be a live uh, webinar with Nextcloud with yours truly. So stay tuned tomorrow at the same time. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.